How you doing? <clears throat> I thought I'd talk about uh, the reptilian brain. Some people say that it's uh, it's bad. No, it's not bad. Well, we'll start this off by going to uh, well, the ancient humans, the earliest humans. Well, they had a reptilian brain too. <clears throat> they lived by their senses, their five senses, you see. But they were able to combine these senses into one whole, which become the sixth sense, that is the five plus one, because that one is different than the five as individual entities. That is, that sixth sense, the one, which becomes the one, the whole, is more important, more valuable, you have more strength in it than what you have in the individual senses taken piecemeal. So this one, we combine the five, it gives us the one, which is different than the five as individual entities, so we get the sixth sense. Very few humans accomplish this today. Very few. But with the sixth sense, okay, the person, the entity that has made this uh, acquisition becomes one with the sixth sense. Since he becomes the seventh one, so we get the seventh, you see. And with these powers, that the seventh, that is the person, that the person has accomplished, he becomes the eighth because of the great power that he is able to use. And we say he becomes the one with the eight-pointed star. Okay. The Christ had an eight-pointed star. His star was a star of eight points. Okay. Well, why can't why can't we why can't we accomplish this? We all have the means within us to do it, but why don't we? You know. So we, we now we go back to the reptilian brain that we all have. We all have a reptilian brain, okay? And so we know that the reptile the reptile lived by instinct. Well, it has senses too, you know, but the reptile lives by instinct. So that reptilian brain within us is instinct, you see. Some people say, well, yeah, the reptilian brain is bad. It gets us into trouble. No, it does not get us into trouble. It's the cerebral cortex that gets us into trouble. Well, how does this work? Well, if we have the entity within us, the reptilian brain, it sends impulses. It comes up with impulses. These impulses are actually knowledge. That's what they actually are. So we say the impulse, okay, goes to the cerebral cortex. And the cerebral cortex acts on it. You know what I mean? That's fine. If the cerebral cortex acts on, which is our reasoning facility, if it acts on the impulses from the reptilian brain, well, we'll go the right way. But the problem is, the cerebral cortex is deviated. It deviates because of all the input that people receive. Lies, misinterpretations, and everything else. We accumulate fear etc., based on all the stuff that goes on in our cerebral cortex. 
because we're not controlling the cerebral cortex. If we control the cerebral cortex, a reasoning, and we base that reasoning on the impulses that we receive from the reptilian brain, our instincts, if we based our reasoning on that which is knowledge, we'd be fine. We, we, we'd be wonderful. We would, uh, we would acquire the eighth star if we could do this. But we don't control the cerebral cortex. We don't, we're not, you know, we're using, we use reasoning, but it's not based on knowledge. So let's go back to the pharaohs. Okay, we see the pharaoh, we see the, the, the uraeus, the crown of the pharaoh. He has a serpent sitting right up on his forehead. That is his guide, guide, G-U-I-D-E. It guides him. That is, the pharaoh is guided by the impulse from the reptilian brain. Yeah. That's why I got it up there. That's why they have it on the crown. You see. But the Pharaoh brought in also, now at this point, the early humans didn't have one, didn't have the thinking process. They didn't have a cerebral cortex. But when by the time we get to the Pharaoh, oh, well, sure, people have been had, you know, the, the, the uh, cerebral cortex. It had grown in. So now the pharaoh, okay, can use his reasoning powers based on the knowledge that he receives from the reptilian brain. The reptilian brain is the guide. But then you have people say the reptilian brain is bad. Oh, they're, they're misleading you. Whoever they may be, they are misleading you. They are misinterpreting the whole situation about the reptilian brain when they say that it is bad. It's not the reptilian brain that is bad. The reptilian brain doesn't reason. The cerebral cortex does. You see. But the cerebral cortex, after it receives such, so much misleading information... You see, it, it drowns out the impulse from the reptilian brain. Oh, people are doing everything. They're moving fast. They ain't got time to think about, what. Well, wait a minute, the reptilian brain. They drowned out the, the impulses. With, they say they're too busy. Oh, I'm doing this. Oh, I'm doing that. I'm very busy. They are drowning, drowning out the impulses from the reptilian brain. And so the cerebral cortex just goes on reasoning based on fictitious information, not based on knowledge. It, it drowns the, the, the knowledge out. It drowns the reptilian brain out, you see. If it was good enough for the pharaohs, then it should be good enough for us, Okay. So now, there's a, a story that, uh, uh, in the mythology, the mythology of uh, Unus, okay? They say Unus is a king, okay? And uh, it says that Unus has trampled over, tra Unus has trampled over um, his enemies. He has conquered them. He has trampled them. They're under his feet. You know what I mean? And then it says that Unus is led by his Uraeus. He's guided by his Uraeus. And then they have for a determinative, a determinative, a snake. Okay. He's being guided by the reptilian brain. And he's able to trample his enemies. Now these enemies, okay, I'm not talking about folks out here in the street or wherever. I'm talking about I'm talking about those personality traits that were drowned out and inhibit Eunice from 
following the instinct, okay, the instinct or the impulses that he receives from the reptilian brain. So he's guided by the serpent. He's being guided by the reptilian brain. And then he reasons on top of the knowledge that he receives from the reptilian brain. You see? So now it would it would be good for the human to sort of slow down. Yeah. Do like the old folks did. Now, there was a, a person who said that uh, people who lived before, let's say, um, uh, Christianity, that was the statement. People who lived before Christianity could not go to heaven. But they could. And they did, because heaven is in here. And when you acquire, like our ancient relatives, our ancestors, once you acquire the sixth sense, and you become the seventh, and you acquire the eighth, then you're there. You have created heaven in yourself. No, no, I'm not talking about something up in the star. I'm talking about something that you have created within yourself, like our ancestors did our earliest ancestors, who didn't even have a cerebral cortex. But we keep our, we keep our cerebral cortex in line and control it ourselves, you see. Then we have heaven here in our hands. So yeah, so the old folks, the ancestors, they, they experience heaven too. You see, so uh, the doctrine of the resurrection, what this person was talking about, why people can't go to heaven if they were born before Christianity, you see. The doctrine of the resurrection is just that it's a doctrine. It teaches people, okay, how to acquire what their ancestors had, what they were like born with. The doctrine of the resurrection teach us how to get that sixth sense. Those people just did it. They just brought all the five senses together and had the sixth sense. But we have to go through all sorts of exercises, like yoga and whatever else, you know, what you call them spiritual exercises. We have to go through that. They didn't. So certainly they went to heaven. You know what I mean? They didn't need the doctrine. They couldn't read. They didn't even have a verbal language. You know? And so the folks who get into the doctrine of the resurrection went through that. What do they do? They still the verbal kind uh, the, the the verbal cortex. I mean uh, the cerebral cortex. They put it to sleep in order to acquire what the folks did uh millions of years ago who didn't have a cerebral cortex. So Putting the cerebral cortex to sleep is uh, equivalent to not having one because when you put it to sleep, it's not working. You're not thinking. You have stilled the thinking process. And you receive impulses down clearly now because you're not thinking. Your cerebral cortex isn't drowning out the reptilian brain and the impulses, you see. So I'm not saying, folks, live by instinct alone. No, human beings are blessed to have the cerebral cortex, but only when they are in control of it. When, not in, when they're not in control of it, other people can put all sorts of things in your head. And you start thinking about those things. And those things become a part of your personality. And you develop bad personality traits. That is personality traits that inhibit you from experiencing heaven. So we say, well, we have to get rid of the personality traits. So what we do with the traits is we don't really can't kick them out. But what we can do is transform them. Transform. Reform. The personality traits. In other words, we take the passion that supports these traits 
We take that passion away and sublimate the passion, that send it to a higher cause, like uh, the acquisition of the sixth sense.